What's up beautiful people? I am just on my way into the park HQ here at Mulu National Park in Borneo. Just walking along this cool like rope bridge thing over the river. Pretty beautiful views on the way. First of all, I would like to say very good morning. Yeah? Good morning. 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 Yeah. morning. So, Salamat. Salamat pagi. Salamat pagi. pagi. Ah. Ah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so this is the tour that we're doing this morning. As you can see, it's like a bunch of caves and cool looking things. Hopefully we'll be able to swim a little bit later. And also I think we're going first to a traditional village. I'm not quite sure, but to get there, we need to get on a boat. Terima kasih. Selamat malam. Ah, here we go. She's the one of the local people here. Uh, I mean, to assist us to do some small work. So the people that live in this village are called the Penan people. They're part of the Orang Ulu tribe, and the Penan people used to live a nomadic way of life. They they were hunter gatherers. One of the last examples basically on the planet however in the 1950s missionaries started coming into this area and it was established as a national park but the missionaries encouraged the Penang people to abandon their primitive way of life interestingly there was no sort of social hierarchies in the Penang people uh, it was just sort of like all the food was gathered and shared which sort of insulated the group from the uncertainties of living a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. But since the national park has been formed and there's been like sort of more settlement after the missionaries came and encouraged the people to do so, they have begun to sort of permanently settle and provide different services and have a cash economy. So now they have things like this market, which we're visiting here, uh, and they sell things to visitors. So we're just getting a few of these little keyring things. Become so cute here. Yes. <laughs> They're made in the same way that we saw back in the Sarawak cultural village, where essentially they just push like each bead on one by one, which is pretty cool. And we've got four for ten ringgit here. So we were just learning that the Penang people actually stopped being nomadic literally within like 10 or 20 years of the Christian missionaries arriving. It stopped them living their nomadic way of life which basically meant that they lived in a little sort of semi, well like 
impermanent setting called a sulap, I think. And then from that they would like use some of the resources and then before they were completely depleted they'd move on to the next place and then they wouldn't destroy the jungle or the rainforest. Since then they've been converted from their animist religion to Christianity. And just over here, this blue building you can see, that's their church which they worship at. Hello! upstream there are some slightly rougher patches but man I love being on boats and being on boats in the middle of the rainforest is amazing. It's so good. So as we head further upstream you can like hear and like feel how shallow the river gets at points. And we have just reached the Cave of the Wind, so-called because there's like a noticeable breeze that runs through. We've just been told that that's because, although like a couple million years ago the river ran through here, obviously now it's a lot lower. And as the air goes past the cave and like from a large area comes into a small area, it goes through and speeds up creating the breeze. Anyway, it's time to head in. see like a huge like hole where the water dripping down has created this crazy formation check this out all because the water is just like dripping down through the cave so cool millions of years of like heavy rainfall these like sinkholes or whatever occur and like the whole roof of the cave collapses check this one out this looks like a hand just coming down from the roof Man, it was warm in there. I always feel like caves should be cold and n a nice respite from the jungle, but caves are always so hot. I'm sweating like mad. And we have just reached the Clearwater Cave System. It's just up some stairs up there. It's so called the Clearwater Cave System because we're by the Clearwater River. As you can see, right now it's not so clear. That's because we've had so much rain, it's actually turned the river brown. But this is, I think, the eighth longest cave system in the world, about 220 kilometers, and possibly the largest by cubic volume. Don't quote me on it, but I think, I think that's right. We have not just the Clearwater Cave only, but also there's another cave called Lady Cave here. Yeah. And also the shape of the cave that tells us about uh, what we call it the, when, when the water was full a long time ago, and then they're just sharpening the cave and carving it all the way. And you can see it all the way inside of this clear water cave like that. So we just climbed up a load of steps from just down 
here, you can't see how far it was, but it was a, a little bit of a climb. We're heading down into these caves. And in we go. The first cave that we're heading into of this system is called the Lady Cave. Apparently some of the formations in here look like ladies, but we'll have to see. And apparently this is the lady in a long wedding dress. And so we've just finished up today's sort of like caving morning activities and it's been epic. I don't know how well this camera's fared in the low light but it was so interesting going in and seeing all the different formations and it's really just like a different world in there. And after the warmth of the caves, it's time to head into the clip. Not so clear water river, but you gotta do it if you can. Woo! It's quite cold, you know. Woo! Yeah, buddy. Don't yet. How is it? <laughs> So we have finished up our morning's activities of caving and just jumping in the river right then was so necessary for me. So we just finished up our morning activities, the caving was pretty sweet and it was just so nice to get in. Even though it wasn't clear water, it was nice cold water to get refreshed in. And this is what's on the agenda for this afternoon. Just had lunch at the Park HQ. A little bit more expensive, but we didn't have time to head back to our homestay kind of place. And now we are just heading off on this afternoon's activities that the girls booked yesterday. And it is the... Canopy walk. Apparently when it goes rotten, it smells like rotten meat. Oh, it's like the Rafflesia. Yeah. It smell good? It does smell like a, like a fishy mark. <laughs> so this plant here is called Am Amorphophallus? Amorphophallus. Amorphophallus, which yeah. literally translates to big, big crooked penis. <laughs> and apparently it smells bad. I can confirm it smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> So these guys back here with all the crazy camera gear, they're filming a documentary for the BBC. And we have now reached the world's longest canopy walk according to our guide and it's pretty cool. You can see that we're literally walking on these kind of walkways and we're just walking above the river down there. It's definitely, it's definitely not one to do if you have a fear of heights and it's incredibly constructive though, like 
great little bits of wood, cables tying it all together, and then every little once in a while you get a nice rest station like this one before heading on, of course, to the next little walkway along here. How is it, Mum? It's incredibly wobbly and bouncy. <laughs> Are you feeling the angels? It's a lot wobblier than you think it's going to be, isn't it? So sometimes to like connect two of the canopy walkways around a corner, you have like one here and then one just here. So you're standing on like a little corner piece and it just, it wobbles so much. <laughs> and to finish off the day, we've come to the viewing point for Deer Cave, which is just up here. Now this is where you get to see the mass like bat exodus, so thousands of bats apparently leaving the cave. Now it depends on the weather, so sometimes they don't come out at all, but we are meant to be doing it tomorrow, but yesterday because they didn't come out and the weather looks alright, we're hoping that they are going to come out. And it is night time here at Mulu. Unfortunately we did not see the bats like streaming out of the cave because the weather got a little bit worse and then it got a lot worse and we got caught in like ridiculous rain. Fingers crossed we'll be able to do the walk and everything that we were planning to do tomorrow. So I'm going to finish this one up here. Thank you so much for watching. Big love. Feels, feels good around here. <laughs> try it, try it. No, it's been in a monkey's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the monkey ate it, then you try it. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs>